Hello, so today we're going to look at the difference between a convergent and a divergent geometric sequence. So uh, just a key thing to remember that we mentioned before. So a sequence is a progression of numbers. So, for example, uh, a geometric sequence could be something like uh, could be three, nine, uh, 27, 81 and so on and so on. So this is a sequence of numbers, but a series of numbers is a sum of the numbers in the sequence. So the series for this sequence would be three nine plus uh, three plus nine plus 27 plus 81 so a series is a sum of numbers in a sequence so that's just the key distinction to me so we want to today uh, today look at convergent and divergent sequences so not series today we'll do that in the next um the next video so this uh this is an example here of a divergent geometric sequence so this sequence here is diverging so basically that the sequence is not tending to a value. So the sequence here is getting, uh, well, it's diverging, as we can see, it's going from two to minus four to eight to minus 16 to, minus, uh, to positive 32. So the common ratio for that one is gonna be minus two, because each time we're multiplying the previous number by minus two. So we've got a common ratio of minus two. And with this sequence here, we're diverging. So we're not converging to a, a limit. There is no limit to this sequence. We're, we're just diverging away, uh, to bigger, uh, to numbers of bigger absolute values, so we're diverging away. Um, but how about this one here? So this one here is a convergent geometric sequence. So we're multiplying each number by half. So the common ratio is going to be a half of this sequence here. But this is a convergent sequence because we're eventually going to converge. And in fact, with this sequence, we're going to converge to zero. And what we'll actually see is that all geometric sequences um, that are convergent actually do converge to zero. So we'll see that um, in a minute. But yeah, this sequence is going to converge, get smaller and smaller and smaller, and the limit is going to be uh, zero. So let's just remind ourselves of this limit notation. Um, so the limit notation, so if you've got a sequence a n, uh, limit as n goes to infinity. So as n, um, as the number, as the term in the sequence goes uh, massive, as you get to the, the essentially the, the infinity term in the sequence, um, if there is a limit, if there's a number L, I call this number L. Um, so if you have a sequence of the limit, which is a real number, uh, then the sequence is uh, convergent. Uh, that's the key thing to know. So if you have a sequence of numbers a n to a one, a two, let's just make a note of this here, a one, a two, a three, um, up to dot dot dot, a n, and then a n plus one, and so on and so on. As this n number gets to infinity, so as you take a limit, as this n goes to infinity, the the infinity term of the sequence, if that does go to a number, an actual number L, a real proper constant number, um, then it's called a convergent sequence. So basically, yeah, this geometric convergent se sequence here um, is going to converge to zero. So eventually you're going to go closer and closer to zero with that one. Um, OK, so the key thing to realize is that the common ratio for a divergent geometric sequence always satisfies uh, the modulus of R being bigger than one or the common ratio being minus one. So as long as the, the common ratio is uh, bigger than one or uh, less than minus one, so if you had a common ratio minus two, a common ratio two, common ratio minus 1.5 or minus 100 or positive 100 um, or minus one, the sequence will diverge. So for example, these ones here. So the ratio for this uh, sequence here is minus two um, times by minus two times by minus two, I'll put a time sign there just to make it clear, time sign there just to make it clear, time sign there. Uh, so with times by minus two each time, uh, this is a divergent geometric sequence. We, we don't tend to a limit. There's no number that we're tending to. We're just diverging. So this sequence is diverging. Uh, likewise with this one here, so each time we're gonna times by three, uh, times by three, uh, times by three. Three has a bigger modulus uh, the modulus of three is bigger than one, as is the modulus two of, of minus two. Modulus of minus two is two, which is bigger than one. So these sequences are diverging. Uh, so again, this is diverging. We're not tending towards a number. Uh, there's no limit to the sequence. Um, likewise of this one here, actually, uh, we're diverging. So we're times it by minus one with this sequence here. So our common ratio is minus one. Our R value is minus one. Um, but we're not going to a number so we're not going to four and minus four we're oscillating between four and minus four so actually yeah we call this diverging even though um 
there's only two numbers in the sequence um, is still called a diverging sequence because it's not tending to a proper one fixed value. We're going between minus four and, and four with that one. But a, uh, a sequence that has a common ratio uh, with a modulus less than one and a, or a modulus equal to one is called a convergent uh, sequence. So this is a convergent uh, geometric sequence. Um, yeah, so for example, this one here. So one, a quarter, a sixteenth, uh, one, 60, uh, one out of 64. Uh, the common ratio there is one out of four times by one out of four uh, times by one over four and times by one over four. Uh, this is converging. And in fact, it's converging to zero. Uh, so converging to zero with that one. So when you've got a common ratio less than one, uh, your sequence will converge to zero. So converging to zero. Uh, this one is, uh, well, this one's a geometric sequence of a common ratio one with multiplying by one each time. Um, but this isn't converging to zero. This is actually just converging to 10. Um, so when your common ratio is one, uh, your sequence will converge to the original number that you start with. When your common ratio is less than one for a geometric sequence, uh, it will converge to zero. So it's always going to converge to zero. Um, so yeah, so um, the key thing to realize, as I just mentioned, is that if your, uh, if your common ratio of your uh, sequence has a modulus less than one, uh, then a geometric sequence always converges to zero. So if the modulus, so if it's uh, a ratio of like a half or minus a half or a third minus a third, <coughs> your geometric sequence will converge to zero. So for example, consider this nth term. So this is a geometric sequence. So a first term, A, we call the A the first term, and then a common ratio uh, minus eight over N, uh, sorry, minus eight over nine uh, to the power of M. So that's our, um, sorry, this should be N minus one there. Let me put an M minus one here because this is should be an nth term of a geometric sequence. So, okay, and there should be an n minus one down here as well. Um, so remember that r is equal to minus eight over n. So this is a geometric sequence here. Um, and uh, yeah, so r is gonna be minus eight over nine. And this satisfies modulus of r less than one because the modulus of minus eight over nine is eight over nine and eight over nine is a number less than one. So the limit of this sequence here, I mean, let's actually just write out what the sequence would look like up here. So this sequence would look like uh, the first term a, and then the next number is gonna be minus eight over nine, lots of a, so minus eight over nine times a, uh, sorry, eight over nine a. The next sequence we're going to times it by eight over nine again. So that's going to give us sixty four over eighty one a. Then the next number is going to be uh, again minus eight over nine times this sixty four over eighty one a. Um, so it's going to go on and on and on. So this sequence is going to converge, and it's going to converge to zero because essentially this number, this fraction in front of the a, will get smaller and smaller and smaller, and will converge to zero. So yeah, so when the uh, when the n value of this end of term goes to infinity, what will happen is that um, yeah, you're going to get a massive um, number in the power there. So when you multiply a number with a size less than one um, to a massive power, so for example, a zero point one to the power of inf uh, of a massive number, or yeah, minus eight over nine to the power of a massive number, um, you will get closer and closer and closer to zero. So eventually the sequence is going to converge to zero. So yeah, this is an example where a geometric sequence converges to zero. So geometric sequences with a common ratio less than one always converge to zero. Um, but how about if you've got a common ratio of R equals one? So in this case, um, if you've got R equals one, uh, the sequence will converge to its first term. Uh, the reason for that is if you've got a ratio r equals one, the first term a, then the nth term is going to be a times r to the power of n minus one. Uh, but your r value is one, so we just substitute that into the nth term formula. Uh, one to the power of n minus one is just actually one, so a times one, which is a. So the limit as n goes to infinity of a, well, that's just a, um, I mean, because you've got r to the power um of n, uh, sorry, one to the power of n minus one here, technically. So one to the power of n minus one. Uh, one to the power of infinity is basically one. Uh, so one times a is one, sorry, one times a is a. So yeah, your limit is gonna be a. So yeah, the key point to notice is that if your common ratio is less than one, a geometric sequence will always converge to zero. Um, but if your common ratio is just one, then your sequence just converges to the original um, value. So yeah, that concludes today's video looking at convergent and divergent geometric sequences.